Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the next review which is of course the Premier League review. Here we only look at one league and yeah uh, before we look into the details like I did for the Austrian and German Bundesliga uh, just a quick overall recap uh, of the season that in general I think this was probably one of the most exciting Premier League seasons uh, that I can remember with most of the key decisions going down the wire up until the last uh, day of play. We had a relegation battle. Yes, it was very clear for early on that there are two teams, Watford and Norwich, that will go down. But uh, there was Burnley, Leeds, Everton, um, all were in relegation trouble. Even, I would argue, Newcastle, uh, we were thinking they might go down the, at one point. So the developments on the bottom were really, really, really... Um, exciting or uh, nervy, uh, you know, <laughs> if you're a fan, that is not something that you want to have. Um, especially if you like Leeds United, you you kind of, you think of yourself as a mid-table team and then suddenly you go on this skid and, and you're in the middle of a relegation battle. So not fun, that for sure. However, I also would say the title race was going down the wire, although there was a spot where you think thought that City's gonna run away with it but then City hit a little bit a rough patch and it really went down the wire and arguably uh, it's the draw of Liverpool against Spurs at home towards the end of the season that actually if Liverpool win that game this could have major imp 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 implications in both ways I think Spurs still would have made it over Arsenal uh, just because of goal difference um, nah. They would have had one point point less. They would have made it ahead of Arsenal. However, for Liverpool, this this would have meant the title. Because those two more points, that would have, would, have, would have been a title for Liverpool. So, you know, it's really it. On thin margin, it ended. Of course, you can pick up any other game where Liverpool lost or Manchester City uh, gained. But it went down the wire. And it was even a crazy finale. Although, uh, technically, Liverpool never were in first place on that last day. And then also, of course, we had this... A uh, weird but entirely uh, gripping uh, fight for the last Champions League spot between Spurs, Arsenal, United were in there for a while, but you know, United totally hit the skids as we'll see. West Ham United were in there as well at one point. And to a certain degree, while West Ham probably had a good goal, good old season, there is an arc argument. It was not good as last season, as, as good as last season. They're still the best of the non nominal top six teams, which this season finished top six. Uh, but you would think that a Europa League spot would have been more, would have been in there. I, which I just, I just want to say. So yeah, those are just some few, I, it was over a really exciting campaign. And to be honest, at, the, at this very moment, I am not sure if I will be able to watch the Premier League next season uh, for the simple reason that um, uh, the contract for uh, a sky that I have is expiring and I would not need to get a new one and uh, it's a serious investment so I, I'm looking at alternatives there. It might be that uh, especially at the beginning of the season, I don't know. I have to see how it will work because uh, I actually, you know that I'm a Serie A guy in many ways but the way this league was going, um, I very often found myself uh, tuning into the Premier League, especially in the last two, three months. Uh, this was almost must-see because almost any game that I picked, there was something riding on it, which is the greatest thing. So an absolutely uh, tremendous uh, season. So let's look at the result of the season uh, and we focus first on the left column. So uh, where I want to tell you, yeah, these are the teams that won trophies. These are the teams uh, that are qualified and the will see we go promoted and relegated. So in the top four, the Champions League, we have uh, Champions League spots. We have, they go all to the group stage. We have, of course, Manchester City as the Premier League champ cha champions. We have Liverpool. You see two trophies next to Liverpool. They, of course, won the two domestic cups um, and almost were able to complete the treble. I mean, they're within two points. And again, the Spurs game at home. If you win that one, you actually have a domestic treble. That, that's pretty big, I, I would say. And in the Champions League final, Arguably, you were the better team. You did not win it, but you know, if you don't do your chances, uh, that's another story. But yeah, 
Manchester City and Liverpool are the two top teams. Uh, then there's a good, then there are the London clubs uh, between Chelsea, Spurs and Arsenal, where Arsenal just missed out, still going to the Europa League uh, groups. Where also we find Manchester United and I know there were many that were uh, hoping that Manchester United will fall into the Conference League in many ways. Uh, but they salvaged the Europa League spot and West Ham is in the Conference League. Relegation after a tough tussle, we already said, what was for Norwich? It is Burnley who go down. Um, I don't want to say unexpected because they had had, had a season, we had them already kind of earmarked as a relegation candidate, but you know, up and down there. And uh, promotion, we have Fulham who stormed through the championship with Bournemouth back again. Um, so we uh, get, get the small stadium in uh, the Premier League back in a way, and we have a big name back. In Nottingham Forest, uh, I think over 20 years since they have been back. So I think this is very, very, very exciting. I, the new season, by the way, starts uh, early August. Now, as for winners and losers, you see here I have in the left column the actual points that were made, and then in the right, the right column the points that I, in my first pre first ever pre prediction, the expected points that um, that were uh, that my model uh, predicted for or for, for them and then I just took the absolute difference between these and so if you gain more points than you were expected then of course you have a green bar if you lost you have a red bar now uh, these are just the absolute differences meaning uh, actual minus expected uh, there should be an argument mainly probably should have uh, made a, per uh, a percent change because the um, uh, let's go to Liverpool. The more the uh, almost uh, 15 points gained by Liverpool, or more than 15, 16 points gained by Liverpool, are probably a little. Given that they already were expected to get 76 points, is a little bit less of an achievement than uh, if you look at Crystal Palace, the 11 points gained there because 37 to 4 for this is a higher percentage increase than 76 to 92. However, we still will talk about the, uh, I have another measure, a metric as well, but just from that we see the biggest change, Liverpool uh, far outdid their expectations, uh, as did Spurs and as did Ar Arsenal, who over, you can say, had Paul positive seasons. You see Chelsea, just a little bit of a red bar, uh, kind of, it's the same feeling, top three, yeah, it's actually a good result, but the overall feeling of the season was so-and-so. A uh, big fat red bar for a top six finish is Manchester United and there's no surprise about it. They were slotted to be a top four team, they finished sixth. Leicester City also after two years of almost making it to the to, to, to championship, they finishing outside your European spots. Uh, also on the negative side, then we have a big pack of over positive performers and I want to mention especially Crystal Palace and Brentford who I think both did excellently. Uh, even Newcastle they had had a very positive season. And then on the bottom, yes, the two two bottom teams, of course, they are disappointed, but Everton and Leeds United, I think, are the bigger stories there. As I said, it is not very easy to, um, to uh, say that with uh, that this was the actual best improvement by Liverpool and I think it is Manchester United or is it Leeds United who had to uh, uh, yeah <laughs> take your take your uh, pick your poison I think it's Manchester United had 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 the biggest points change uh between preseason and now uh but we need to look at also in the relative terms and what I did is I uh took the ratings and looked at how the ratings change and now again these ratings are only uh, relative within the league so this does not transfer over to the other leagues i actually want to work on that that i make an algorithm that actually transfers it over to other leagues as well uh so that we can really say this is the best team in europe and so on and so forth which probably the first two uh in this list are the two best teams in europe at the moment uh but here we actually see the rating changes over the season and i normed them to uh, to numbers between zero and a hundred uh and you actually see that uh city actually took a little uh dive liverpool's increase uh, although sizable is not as uh prominent as we saw it so i saw before uh and we also see again Chelsea, slightly different, Spurs up, Arsenal, right where we actually expected them to, 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 to be in many ways. And then you see United really having the biggest dip of them all. 
but it also again goes to the teams that are the finished mid table that actually have really really good seasons in Crystal Palace, Brentford, and in the end we'll also see uh, when when we look at the teams a little bit more in detail, uh, Newcastle has two big red fat red bars. For Everton and Leeds United, who just barely escaped and stayed in the league. I think a league is better for them staying in, but it was really seasons to forget for, for the student. And we, of course, Norwich City, um, who again came in actually as the top team from the, champ the championship and again went nowhere, which is rather disappointing. So, as with uh, Germany and Austria, I actually want to quickly run through all the performance graphs that I have made uh, during the season. So from my prediction for all the teams involved, I run through them in the order that these teams finished the 2021 season. Um, just to, because this is how I've been generating them uh, in, in my model. Um, yeah, whatever, whatever. So we'll start here with City. Um, and on the left side, you see how the expected points developed. On the right side, you see how the rating developed. And I think for City, it is rather interesting how um, it started kind of, kind of steady. There was this big rise and City always has, or had, had at least in, the, in, in, in last year already and before, they have this relentless streak starting kind of in uh, November and then going through the Christmas break. And usually who leads after the Christmas break usually looks good because of the dense schedule. Uh, if you uh, swing the momentum your way, it is really, really hard to turn that, that momentum around. However, um, then kind of unexpectedly, uh, between March and April, suddenly City, uh, well, even February, suddenly City lost them that, that momentum. It, it carried them up. And it's they steady again and then suddenly they uh, went down and only at the end they picked the pace up again. Uh, you know, a Champions League exit uh, will do wonders there too. And also the pressure from Liverpool and then uh, they pulled through to just finish ahead of Liverpool. However, not in the uh, rating. You see how City stayed largely consistent. It was not uh, rating wise that did not really improve all that much. Uh, and then kind of fell a little bit off towards the end of the season, even fell behind Liverpool, who had this relentless streak, winning, 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 winning for an entire year and even going far in the Champions League, which is what City did not do. However, it is enough for City to claim the title. Uh, not so much for the City rivals, uh, man, Manchester, man, Manchester United. Um, it's actually a very uh, different story between the left and the right graph. But I think the left one uh, kind of tells the story how bad the results were if the left graph and expected points if you have a big drop this meant a really disappointing victory uh loss not a victory a really disappointing loss and you see while well, united season started overall i would say positive then suddenly beginning of october it really took a nose dive a huge nose dive uh and cal coming in the big loss to liverpool at home where uh then uh oligon Solskjaer got sacked Afterwards, it, on the, on, on the run, uh, around the new year, the pace got picked up, but then uh, it again came to a halt and it just the uh, losses became not as embarrassing any, anymore and, or, or as damaging as they had before. It was really you lost most of your um, statues in this early run in October where you just where United were just abysmal. Um, in the rating, it is a much more steady thing, although you see also this between January and March, kind of steady, kind of up, it looked all right, and then it just, the wheels came off, and they came off big time um, for, 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 for the matter, and United, uh, one of the, if not the biggest disappointment of the entire season. Uh, big rivals, Liverpool, the exact opposite, uh, strong start, then uh, rough skit early November uh, <laughs> there. Rough patch also, you know, starting good January, but early, early January, the Christmas break, Liverpool did not look the good, but then they picked up the pace and you can see how it went all up, 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 up. There's only one downturn. That's the one against Spurs. If that is also an up, Liverpool win the title. That's why I'm saying, yes, it's probably the thing in November that killed uh, their title chances, arguably. But if you look at it overall, uh, in the uh, last big picture, that draw against Spurs 
hurt you in in the end. I don't know if it's a consolation prize that Liverpool ended up uh, being the in the rating the best team at, at the end end of the season. It's really um, it was first Liverpool and Chelsea neck to neck, and then you can see already. I mean, the second curve on all on the right is of course Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea how Liverpool detached themselves from Chelsea and go to City toe to toe, even overtaking them overall. Speaking of Chelsea, here you here, here see the curve. Chelsea was really there. At the beginning of the season, they were right there, uh, trying to be uh, in the title race. And then uh, in December, it, the wheels came off. Uh, it leaked when, you know, when the whole Russia crisis hit in early, early March. Chelsea actually um, pulled up, pulled together again, put it to, to get a good, good run, only for it to fall eventually flat. Uh, but you see that especially between uh, December and February, this is where it all went then down the, the, the downtown hill and uh, Chelsea overall fell also down in the rating. Leicester so and so season over steady. You lost a little bit your momentum at the beginning of the season. Then uh, you you went steady, but you went definitely from a kind of um, you know Europa League team. You went into the mediocrity in the middle. Uh, West Ham had a push to go into the Champions League. You see the big one in November. This was a win against Liverpool. It's always against Liverpool. This is also one that could have cost Liverpool right there. Uh, where you were pushing for a Champions League spot. At that moment, then, it was only going down. Not big, but it was only going down. Even in the rating, you see you hit that high at, at the end of last year and then it kind of went steady and then in the end you just couldn't hang on anymore. Uh, Spurs is one of the more most interesting curves because a uh, really bright start, then a big fall, then came Concantin, tried to stabilize it, and overall the trend is positive. However, there was this patch in February where Spurs were actually really not good. And then it's all up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Really, really interesting. When at the end, then Spurs became relentless. And it's really this end spurt. There is, you see, at the beginning of, uh, I, I, I would say, April, they were kind of in the top top, top four, then they had a bad run of results and at the end they picked it up and went over Arsenal. Whereas Arsenal in a way is almost the opposite. Bad start, picking up the pace, really low looking good and uh, come January you really thought that Arsenal is going to finish top four. They really look good, but they didn't bring it over the line. I really want to choose this uh, phrasing. Arsenal didn't bring it over the line. I think they fell flat. It's not that they threw it away. I just think that Arsenal at the end just fell flat. Uh, it is a little bit golden because you see early May, it really seemed Arsenal is safe in the top, top, top four. And then you lose against Spurs. You had already dropped points before and then suddenly uh, you cannot pick up the pace again. Uh, and you lose your spot in the top four that way. But uh, overall still a rather positive season for Arsenal. Leeds United, you see it was a steady decline. They could not keep up the good performance from last season. But it looked already, it looked all right until February came and suddenly the lost, 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 Bielsa out. Um, um, then uh, Jesse Marsh came in. You see it picked up a little bit initially, but then it dangerously fell down. It was not because that their performance was actually uh, improving. It was more stagnating, but that Everton and Burnley suddenly were uh, picking up the pace. However, at the very end, they get a big win and Leeds United stay in. Um, uh, if we go now to Everton, the other team, again, good start and then it's going down and uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, early, uh, late or mid-April, it was that Everton actually were odds on to get relegated. I had to pick up the pace late on and that was uh, important. There was really a period where Burnley and uh, Everton were... Uh, Fighting for for first for, for survival that really got leads into it. So Everton actually then managed to secure survival uh, with games to spare, which was important for them. Aston Villa, um, except for the stint from uh, you know early October to November, where they lost I think six in a row, and then uh, Dean Smith had to be sacked and Gerrard came in. 
Other than that, it looks like a rather, rather steady thing. Um, Gerard actually could put uh, Villa up again, but then, uh, you know, they didn't go anywhere in many ways. Although rating-wise, they did actually have improvements. Uh, Newcastle, that's the most interesting, because uh, you see already that uh, early December, Newcastle, last place team. And then they picked it up. And then they had a huge upturn, uh, of course. Eddie Howe came, 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 came in, but also the new investment came in, uh, however shady that, that investment may, may be. Uh, they had a really good, good run, only stopped a little bit in March, but over, overall they picked up the paces and finished then in the top half, uh, nah, not quite not in the top half of the table. This seems like a big turnaround, however, if you see how things are tied together towards the bottom, uh, you know, it's almost by random chance that they uh, then finished up so high, but still, it's a remarkable turnaround right there. Wolves, almost the opposite in many ways. Steady says that they were in Champions League contention late February. Couldn't bring it all in. Petered out in many, many ways. Um, Crystal Palace, to me, one of the biggest stories of, of the season. The uh, work that Viera has been doing there was just excellent. Um, Funnily enough, this late April uh, slog that they had may have even gotten them into a relegation trouble, but over the season was very, very positive. And you see the rating curve is almost only up. It is a continuous upward trend. Yes, with a few bumps in there, but all these losses were not that hard on the rating. They were really, really good. Chris Spells, an absolutely amazing story this season. Southampton could have been, but I, I don't know. March out of gas. You can really see it looked all, I mean, there was a little skid in there in December, then they picked up, uh, picked pick it up, they actually were, looked really, really good, but then come March, if the season was a bit of any March, it would have been all fine. After March, whew, all downhill from there on. Sad to see, honestly. Uh, Brighton, there is a sameness to them, then there was the skid and then the up, but they finished top half they were actually had a much safer season than they had before uh, last 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 season when they were always down. Always good performances the Brighton puts in. Um, uh, Coach Potter, Dev, they're definitely one of the hottest names out there, although never really for a good uh, a spot. Um, again, what's worrisome is that they had a steady up and then there was this slump in uh, early spring. But then again, they got it out what Southampton did not do. Uh, Burnley, yeah. It was all. It was always gonna be a struggle. In March, it looked good. In late April, it looked good. You couldn't get it over the line. It's uh, that's about all that I can say. It. Uh, they had a real run where you really thought that they might actually stay in the league. It did not help that you have many had many 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 makeup games. That definitely played a factor in that there were many games that were postponed, and then Burnley had many games to play in a short period of time, and I think that might have ultimately undone them. Norwich, similar to Greta Fürth in Germany, were always looking like last place finishers, except for a little stint in uh, Jan in, in, in January. Rather disappointing. Watford, uh, Dumpstaff, I mean, so many coaching changes. What do you do? Basically staying down uh, all, 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 all the time. It was very... It, you know, at the half a point of the, of, of the season, you already had the feeling that Watford is not going to make it. Unlike Brentford. Brentford is also one of the positive teams. Really, really good start. Then, you know, kind of finding the footing. Then uh, being in danger, going stale. It was almost like, yeah, um, you start well and then you cannot get it. Uh, then teams get used to your style of playing and have figured it out. Then the Ericsson effect comes in. And you can really see that it kicks in somewhere in March. Where suddenly Brentford uh, stopped this little slide where you almost were worried was similar to Rayo in Spain. We almost were worried that they're not going not gonna to make it, but then they kicked it in and had a 13th place finish. Um, really, really, really good season for Brentford. And as, as a statistician, Brentford is uh, definitely one of my favorite teams at this moment. Don't have a jersey of theirs yet. In any case, this is my Premier League review. Uh, please let, let me know what, what, what you thought about all these graphs, if you want to add something. I, again, in order to keep this uh, video at a reasonable length, I cannot go into too much detail, although having here only one league allowed me to be a little bit more detailed 
uh, as well. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and kick the little bell. So in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.